Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, Ross here, welcome back to Ross Petty Official. If you join us for the first time, make sure you go and click that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on anything that gets uploaded right here. So how are we all doing? Uh, good, I hope. I was lucky enough to get me COVID job done uh, a couple of days ago, so I'm feeling a little bit sore, my arm's feeling a little bit uh, sore, but no real major side effects, thankfully, other than looking like I've had <laughs> not much sleep, which I haven't. But anyway, I, I just wanted to come on and tell you that I'm doing something slightly different uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. Back at the start of the coronavirus pandemic, when we all got told to stay indoors, protect the NHS and save lives, the lockdown began. And while the lockdown was happening a few weeks into that, we had great weather. I was realising I'm not getting back to work anytime soon. And I was having some conversations with some old friends that I used to work with. Now, I'm an entertainer and I've been an entertainer since I was 19 years old. My career started on the British UK holiday park scene uh, as a coach style entertainer. I worked in Blackpool and then I worked at Pakefield for a company that was fantastic to work for and I had a brilliant time doing that and met some friends for life. One of these friends is a good pal of mine called Lee. He's from the Northwest over in Manchester kind of way. Uh, and me and him were talking and we said, wouldn't it be nice if we could connect, reconnect with some of the people that we used to work with uh, and talk about some of our shared experiences of working uh, on the British holiday parks. Uh, so we did that. We got on Zoom and we caught up with some people uh, and we recorded our interviews and we turned them into a bit of an interview slash podcast type scenario. We talk about some of the cabaret acts, some of the celebrities that have passed through the doors, uh, some people that left a good impression, a bad impression, some of the funny stories. I'm feeling great, you know. But then again, I went for a checkup recently and the guy stuck his finger up my bum and I thought, I really need to find another dentist. We've got funny stories, funny anecdotes, some funny jokes, some not so funny. <laughs> Anything and everything you can expect uh, to learn and experience and to do if you work on the UK holiday park scene. Um, literally only just started editing them together in the last couple of months uh, and then I noticed a page that came on Facebook all about um, ex-staff of the company that we work for, people from all different departments and I thought now would be a really really good time to uh, to share these kind of interviews that we did almost a year ago with you guys. Uh, I hope some of you enjoy it, I hope you take the time to go and watch uh, and have a listen to some of the stories that are shared with us on the podcast. Uh, please feel free to leave comments if you would like to be interviewed. We're happy to do more interviews going forward. So yeah, drop us a line. Uh, we'll leave all the contact information in the link below in the description. Uh, and yeah, just please enjoy. We, I had a really good time doing these. Please bear in mind it was a year ago. It was last year, the right at the peak of lockdown when we're having beautiful weather every day. And uh, yeah, just just let us know what you think and, and please uh, and enjoy because we enjoyed making them and we hope to make some more. So to everybody who watches and listens, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you go and subscribe and click the bell for notifications and you won't miss anything that gets uploaded right here on Ross Petty Official. So enjoy the Magam and the Monk podcast. Yes, as we present Holiday Park Life. Thanks. Well, here we are. Welcome, 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 everybody out there. Uh, we are presenting another fabulous show here at Podcast Time. It's Macam and the Mank. We are presenting another show. It's Holiday Park Life. And today we've got another guest. Lee, are you excited? I'm really excited. This you know, guy was like a, um, a legend throughout the, the parks I worked. Yeah, well, he's, he's, legendary. he's a legend everywhere he goes, this fella. He, he, uh, he was actually my GM when I, uh, when I was at the little lovely fishing village of Pakefield down on the southeast coast uh, back in 2003, I believe. Uh, spent 10 months under this guy, who were missus, and um, had a wonderful time. He was a great guy. He was actually the most hands-on GM that I've ever had in terms of helping out the entertainment team. So much so, in fact, he used to appear in some of our shows as a vocalist. Uh, we'll get more into uh, his, his past, his present, and his future, and what he's been up to since leaving Holiday Park Life. Uh, our guest today, we're happy to welcome, uh, say a big hello, Lee, and me, to Mr. Phil Martin. Phil, thanks for joining us. Hello. Thanks for inviting me. Hi there. Nice to talk to you guys. Yeah, it's great to see you. You're looking very fit and well, very fresh, very rested. Are you enjoying lockdown? Well, yeah, really. I've spent a lot of time in the garden, so and the weather's been fantastic, hasn't it? So, yeah, it's it's not been as bad as it could have been. Yeah, I think we're, I, I'm in a similar position, obviously, in my line of work. It's, it's a bit uncertain and a bit unsure as to when I'll get back to, you know, being a pop star and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, exactly. it is a bit worrying, but... 
I've, I've quite enjoyed I've quite enjoyed my time. It's been nice having the opportunity to catch up with some uh, familiar, friendly faces. So thanks again for, for, for agreeing to join us. We've got loads of questions for you. Is it okay if we just dive right in? Yeah, go ahead. So, so Phil, how, how many seasons in total do you know off the top of your head? How, how long did you actually work for Holiday Parks? Uh, 35 years. 35 wow. years. That's I amazing. did, yeah. So obviously, you, you know, when, when you started, it was a completely different world from the world that we're living in today in terms of... Oh, like, it was totally, totally different. I mean, the, the old guys with, from the big companies, you know, Fred Pontin and Billy Butlin, was still alive and still running the companies when I first started. Yeah. And can you remember where your first, where your first job was? Uh, yeah, I was at um, Prestatyn in North Wales, and my very first job was uh, working in the fish and chip shop. In the fish and chip shop. Yeah, so, yeah. Obviously, we mentioned in your introduction that you 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 were my general manager, so you were the, in charge of the day to day running of the entire site. There was you you were at the top of the totem pole, as it were. Um, and, and you worked your way up from working in the fish and chip shop. So obviously, as somebody that that spent a, a short time in Holiday Park, and obviously I was in entertainment, but I only did a couple of seasons. Would you agree that there's room for growth within the companies that you, that you can be working for, like whether it's the big ones or some of the smaller independent ones? Because I think there's loads of people that think, oh, I'm going to come and do this job, and then that's going to be it. But there is definite room for, for growth. I mean, you're a prime example of that. Would you agree? How, how did your how did your journey sort of take its twists and turns to get to the general manager? Uh, absolutely. I think if, you, if you're resourceful and willing and want to take part in what's going on, then the sky's the limit, really. Uh, I mean, the, one, of the, one of the blue coats that worked for me is now a general manager um, for the well, company that's, that's that we right. worked for. Yeah. That, that, well, that's um, Laura. I'm hoping to have Laura on very, very soon, actually. She started. Oh, great. Yeah, I mean, as, as she, she's lovely. And then... Yeah, she was, she was also one of my entertainment staff, as you were. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of ways sort of through and up the ladder. But as I say, I started in the fish and chip shop. I ended up, I went to work in the kitchen. Um, then I learned how to cook and I became a, a chef. Uh, then I was the head chef. Then I ended up as the catering manager. Um, and then we were bought by um, a, a very big national company. Um, and they kind of amalgamated some roles. So then I was food and beverage manager, looking after the bars and all the catering areas. Uh, and then um, I went on a thing called an assessment centre to see how you fare at being a GM. And um, I ended up uh, being the, the top of the class for, for that assessment centre. So I got a role as a general manager. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I was devastated I loved... when, I, when I first went there because they, they just got rid of, just phased that programme out. Um, just as I joined the yeah. company at the start, but my previous GM, he also had gone through the same route like you'd taken and had an assessment he did. It sounds amazing. Yeah, he did. There, there were so many ways that you could like uh, score points to get yourself further up and, and show that you were, you were able. Um, it was a brilliant way. And I tell you what, I enjoyed every minute of, of my career doing that, every minute of it. Um, we had such great times and people keep saying to me, you should have written a book about this. And I really should. I should have noted down all the things that happened because the people just wouldn't believe, uh, as you guys know from, from what you saw when you were there, people wouldn't believe some of the stuff that happens. And fantastic stories to tell and lots of great times and great fun and, and met loads of great people. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got very fond memories of my time, even though it was only a, sh a short time that I spent working on the holiday parks. Obviously, me and Lee is doing this podcast together, and I met Lee in 2001, I guess, so coming up to 20 years that we've maintained a friendship. And we speak on a, on a if not daily, on a weekly basis and have done for, for all that time. So you're right. Um, I mean, obviously, there's, there's uh, I, I know, I don't know if Lee knows, but your actual life partner, the person that you've been together with for the last, as long as I've known you, did you, you met on the holiday parks as well, is that right? Um, no, we didn't. No, that, that's not quite right. Um, uh, we actually met um, through some friends. We, we, we met through friends at a friend's house. Um, right. But 
their career has followed my career because not long after we met, um, it, a job came up with me and that's kind of gone on. So wherever I've moved to, we've moved together. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's been a great sort of partnership, really, as far as work's concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously, like your first day, can, can you remember your interview? And was it, was it specifically a job in the fish and chip shop that you went for? Or was it sort of just a job at the park because you thought a, a season on a holiday park would do you good? Was it, what, what was the thinking behind a job? On a holiday now, park. A, a friend of a friend of mine already worked there um, and suggest I wasn't very happy doing what I was doing and uh, they suggested that uh, why don't I go for an interview and go and work there and as it happens my dad um, owned a fish and chip shop for years and years and years so I'd worked in his and uh, it just seemed a logical thing to do and from day one it was just such great fun um, I've never looked back from that really and as I say worked hard um, got on well with the right people, made the right impressions and worked my way up. So you had insider information from the fish and chip shop trade? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Made sure been... I didn't get battered. <laughs> what, what oh. oh, God. Sorry, what, sorry. <laughs> what you'll see happening here at the moment, what I can see is every guest that we have on always has the same story. It's great memories. They knew a friend who worked there, so they went there. You know, you make lifelong friendships and relationships. Yeah, you so really much to take from really it. And I really want to get that message out, especially to the people who listen regularly, because they'll hear the same pattern of messages from all our guests. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the, and I think it's it becomes part of your life. Um, it, it's not like a job almost. It's something that just gets them your skin. And even people who, well, like you guys, even people who haven't stayed on the holiday parks. I've gone on to do things linked to it. Quite a lot of people have. I mean, that you know, comedians and singers and dancers and all all kinds of careers have come from working on the holiday parks. And even some of the some of the big names have worked for for those holiday parks. Yeah, I mean, we've um, a, a handful of names that, that we'd, we'd love we'd love to have on as guests. You know, like people like Shane Ritchie, Bradley Walsh. Like, there's there's so the, the list is really endless of people that have that have taken that route of holiday park certainly for entertainment but like you said people people don't say these things because the <laughs> the lying about it this, this is just a common thread and a common trend between every single person that we've spoke to have all said that it's it's a chapter of the life that they remember it's only the fond memories that they remember which i think is really important and really a good message to send for anybody that's thinking about a career in in holiday parks i know obviously in the current climate the the it's a bit unsure and everything's up in the air and i think it'll probably be next next season now the that we'll see some normality really returning yeah um but I, I would, I can highly recommend it. And actually, everybody that I spoke to it says the same thing that they highly recommend. If you're interested in doing a job and you're a young person that wants to go and get a bit of independence, learn a bit of responsibility, uh, you know the 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 lessons that you learn to stand on your own two feet, meeting friends, like having adult relationships with people, staying up as late as you want, going for a beer with all your pals, and working hard. There's no better training ground, I think, to prepare you for the outside world than going and doing a season on a holiday park. I had great fun. Can't recommend it highly enough. I, I couldn't either. I mean, every word you've just said is absolutely how it is. Um, Shane, Shane Ritchie worked at, what, at the same park that we were, funny enough, but not, did, yeah. not at the same time. Um, but, um, I mean, he's got some stories to tell, believe me. I've had a couple of nights at the bar with him. <laughs> and he can, he he can tell you maybe one or two of them things that you wouldn't want to put on your podcast. But he he's <laughs> he, he is such an ambassador for holiday parks. I mean, he, he mentions the many many programs that he's on and interviews he's done. He always mentions his past on holiday parks because it, it's got such great memories for him, and they are for all of us. Absolutely, but, but it's also never too late, Phil, to uh, write this book. You know. I think you should write it. No, I know. It's just that as I get a bit older, my memory's probably gone and I can't remember a lot of the stories. If you listen to I'm all our previous podcast episodes, I'm sure it'll jog your memory a couple of times. <laughs> I'll tell you what, some of the memories, it's probably just as well to remember. But but un unbelievably uh, good fun. 
uh, is what I remember the most. And the camaraderie of it and, and friends for life. I mean, you've, you've spoken already about Laura, who's one of the GNs. I'm still friends with her now. I see her quite often. She actually lives in the next town to us. Yeah. Um, and, and I see her quite often and we go out and we, we, you know, we always talk about what went on and the people we knew and remember this person and remember yeah. what they did and such such fantastic memories you don't get that working in a you know a shop or an office or um it, it it's a it's a different life altogether and i couldn't recommend it high enough really if, yeah. before you went to the holiday parks what what area were you living to then end up in press in and before you got there what were you expecting and did it match well i lived i, I or lived it surpass them? um i lived not far from Prestatin, so that was why that was the one I ended up on. So I was actually a local to that holiday park. Um, and that holiday park was originally uh, a trotting track, like a horse trotting track. And that's why it's um, in a big circle. That's why it's in a big circle. They kept the shape of it when they built all the chalets around and the main building in the middle. The, the main building in the middle used to be the grandstand and all the, uh, all the, um, the track it went round and they built the chalets around the outside so uh yeah it was owned by um a man called albert gube who was the founder of quicksave i don't know if you remember quicksave yeah. big supermarket yeah. chain but that was what he did and quicksave's head office was in prestatin and uh he bought the trotting track and the rest is history if you like uh, speaking of history, Quicksave, I, I remember them very well. I lived on No Frills Beans for about uh, six months when I was a black <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were very lucky, weren't you, really, when you think what we've just been going through, to get No Frills Beans would have been something to shout array about. I, I, I actually was, was uh, yeah, I mean, it's been crazy, but I, I was incredibly lucky because both of the parks that I worked on were um, sort of half board centres, so Blackpool yeah. and Pakefield. Uh, I, I was very fortunate to have the, a, a restaurant where I could go and eat a couple of times a day if, if, if I needed to. And uh, do you remember these dinner tickets that you used to have to buy? You used Absolutely. To to, I think it was like 150 or, or two quid for like a meal. And uh, I remember on the entertainment team, we would always try and find ways of avoiding having to purchase a ticket and just sneaking in to get a free meal. And if you managed to do it, you felt like, you know, you'd achieved something, you'd stuck it to the man. <laughs> I, I remember that, but of course I was on the other side of that. Yeah. I was the guy that was saying, how come we've only got 12 tickets in and there's 24 people at a meal? <laughs> 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 I, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm a confession now. Like I'm getting, I'm casting all these sins and getting them off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> too late for me to do anything about it now, Ross. That, that's Bill, it. it's I'm never too late to reprimand him. It never is too late. <laughs> I, I remember, I remember him. He was an absolute fitness freak. He was, um, <laughs> and he never cost me a huge amount because he didn't eat all the things that were bad for you. He was all his his body was a temple, so it was all fresh stuff and. I, I just remember, I, I, I loved uh, the omelette stations. That was my favourite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go the oh, yeah. yeah. yeah they were good. <laughs> Happy days. Um, they were. So, it's obviously, since you started at Press Start, and a lot of things have changed, I had no idea that it was uh, that what it was before in its previous incarnation. So, that's something really interesting that you've told us about now. Um, another thing that we've been trying to figure out, and I don't know if you can shed some light on this, when when we spend time on the holiday centres, our chalets would refer to them chalets as sheds. Um, were the sheds when you arrived, or were they called something different? Or can you remember when sheds came in? Was that something that just developed over no. time? Would love to know where the origin of the word shed came from. I wish I could tell you a fantastic story about that happening, but they were called sheds when I arrived. Oh, wow. So okay. they've, they've always, to, to my knowledge, they've always been called sheds. We're going to have to go back a bit further and dig a bit deeper, I think. I know. Yeah. Well, if you can find somebody older than me that worked for those companies, good luck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Phil, listen, you've kept us so entertained, like we're talking about social media, like during, um, during the whole lockdown, I, I've, I've, I've been bowled over and I've always had a big chuckle and a big smile on my face every time I see your profile. Because during lockdown, you did something really cool, didn't you? You posted jokes on a daily basis to sort of keep up morale and keep up the spirits. I thought that was a really cool thing. And I've written down loads of them jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've pinched, I've pinched, I've pinched um, loads of them for I, my show. I, I just sort of felt that, 
all we were hearing about on the news and the every every radio program and every TV program was about what was going on and how awful it was and and it was sort of I I, I was here thinking this is getting me down never and I'm very sort of jolly upbeat person so what you know there'll be people out there on their own who I just wanted to brighten their day up a little bit really so I turned my Facebook into a bit of a joke a joke fest yeah yeah for a few it was weeks. absolutely loved it I I, I think. Um, that that's a great example of something that you would do that that's good to to boost morale you're not doing that for yourself you're doing that for other people and i think that that made you a really good general manager because i always thought that you were a person that was very good at motivating staff very good at getting the best out of people um, and something that i guess you probably just learned and developed them skills over time there's no shortcut to things like that um, and obviously, that, that was some, some of the skills that you learned working on a holiday park for so many years. Um, if, if you could go back and, and give yourself, as an 18-year-old lad, if you could go back in time and give yourself some advice, what, what would you tell yourself? What would you tell an 18-year-old Phil Martin? Right. Um, I think the, the first thing you need when you go to a place like that is to, and I don't mean this in a bad way, to let yourself enjoy it. To, to not take yourself too seriously and go w with the thing in mind that you're going to have a really good time and that if you work hard everything's going to come out good at the end of it and I think that's the thing that's the thing that that young people should know from the beginning is that you only get one go at life mm -hmm. and when you're young that's the time to take it all on board do all the things have great fun with it and as you've said uh, already really is that that's how you learn about life and that te and, and that teaches you so much about life um is to just go in with your eyes open um the people who didn't make it were usually the people that thought they were just gonna go and get paid and have a holiday and yeah. it's it's not what it isn't is a holiday um, it's a great place, but it's a great place to work and to to work with other people and to get to know people. And you see all kinds of people, both with the visitors and the, and the guests that you get there, and also the staff that you work with and, and the and the managers and the team. And it doesn't matter what department they're in. You learn so much. And I would say, drink it all in, and that will that will give you stuff for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice. I think to, just to touch on something that you that you said there, it, it is a place where you would learn to work hard. And I would definitely say I got my work ethic. You don't in just, you don't just inherit a work ethic via DNA. You you learn a work ethic by being in a position where you can either take shortcuts and try and try and blag things, or you actually work hard and you take pride in what you're doing. Um, whether yeah. it be in my case performing or. or presenting myself or you know speaking to, to the guests like you said and the visitors and working with a team I think you learn so many good lessons and so many life lessons working on these holiday parks as a young person I, I still carry a lot of the lessons into my everyday job now that I do and, and, and actually UK holiday parks make up probably over over a third of my my performing diary throughout the year yeah. so I, I see a lot of the teams and I see a lot of the staff now on at the various different holiday parks working for various different holiday park companies and um, I, I think the big difference for me is that the, t the 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 show teams the entertainment teams seem to be a lot smaller and i think that just comes down to budget and finance and things like that but i still see um the the young people that they're dead hungry and dead willing to learn and you can spot i always say that you can spot the ends manager two or three seasons before they ever get to a management position because some of them you can just tell they've just got it they've just got it in them um yeah you can i, I never st i didn't stay around for that long but I, I always remember speaking to you'll remember this guy legend uh mr graham henry and before i left he, he said to me he went well if, if things don't work out with the band you can always come back here because uh you know we might be able to do something with you and I thought that was actually like really high praise indeed coming, coming from Graham Henry. But I think that was the longest conversation we had in 10 months. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. He was a real character, he was. Um, I, I, it used to make me laugh, the, the things he, he got his, wor his, his words mixed up. 
Um, and he used to put a different word in than the, than the, the re and it used, I absolutely used to crease up. He'd say, um, can I give you a couple of examples? Yeah, absolutely, I'd <laughs> love that. He'd say things like, um, oh, I wish you'd been here last night, boss. There, there was such a wonderful ambulance in the room. <laughs> Um, and another one was, uh, don't worry about me. It's like water off a dog's back. Wow. <laughs> um, all, all kinds of things. He said, uh, this guy really upset me. He said, it was like a red rag in a china shop. <laughs> 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 there was loads. He did loads and loads of those. And they weren't on purpose, which is what made them funny. You know? Oh, absolutely. He really was a character. It was a pleasure to character. work for him. Um, so obviously, it, it, over 35 years, you, you've seen pretty much anything and everything there is to see on a holiday park. Obviously, my background is based in entertainment, and it's still the job that I currently do today. Um, you will have seen any and every cabaret act that you can possibly imagine uh, over the time oh, yeah. that you spent. And in fact, you spent a bit of time on the stage. I, I know that you used to sing, uh, oh, what was the song? You, yeah, I remember you singing my season in, a, I think it was a James Bond show we did, and I think it was from Russia with Love, and you yeah. had a, had one of the, the big old Russian Cossack hats on and like a sort I of... I did, that was <laughs> well remembered, yeah, I did, I did do that. Uh, yeah, I was in a couple of blue coat shows along the way um, yeah. and, uh, and they were always great fun and it was nice to be part of that team as well because it encouraged the staff um, and, it, it, and it kind of made them feel that, you know, we were all the same at the end of the day and I, I always used to have a saying that... Um, if a kitchen porter doesn't turn up tomorrow, everybody will be up in arms because they'll really miss him. If I don't turn up tomorrow, it'll be two o'clock in the afternoon before anybody notices I'm not there. <laughs> um, so, we, we, you know, we're all impo as important as each other. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. I think one thing I've learned over the years of, of like my nine-year stretch was it's a breeding ground for great leaders. And if you look at the old school assessment centre way and the people coming through, like I reported into a GM who, who was a GM for a long time and it shows and you do inherit that work ethic from people like Ross said and like you've covered. It, it's just the breeding ground for strong, able, willing people to work. It absolutely is. And we talked about um, how, you know, our hard work, hard work makes a difference. But do you know what? It, 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 we call it hard work. But it actually wasn't like work, was it? It was just no. it was just such great fun. And we did loads of hours in those days as well. It wasn't like it is now where you you know you only have to do 40 hours and then you've got to finish. Um we people did loads of hours, but they did it because they loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, was the difference. I think it's like the old saying, I don't know who this, who said this first, um, but a lot of people have said it since, that if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I, th I think that's so true. And that's something that I've it's tried true. to do th throughout my life. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 38 now and I've, I've never had a job, 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 job since I was 16, 17 year old. So I've mm, been dead fortunate. Yeah. So I don't class my, my work on Holiday Park as a, as a job either. I mean, it was obviously it was a job and it paid money. Not a lot of money, obviously. <laughs> We've covered wages in a previous episode. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, but I, I felt like that was um, a university course for performers. In, 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 for, for me, in my experience, I learned how yeah. to plug in a mic, set up a PA system, I learned how to talk to an audience, how to call a game of bingo, and it brought out all of the confident tools that you need to be able to go on stage and, and make a good account of yourself. And yeah, that, definitely I, really did. You can tell the people that have just w watched, you know, X Factor or Pop Idol or whatever it is, and, and went and bought a pair of speakers and a microphone and went out and just became a singer. And you can tell the ones that have had experience that have worked on holiday parks before, because the difference is the person that's just became a singer with no experience just stands there and sings a song and looks at the feet. Where someone yeah. that's had a bit of experience working at a holiday park, they'll totally engage uh, the audience, they'll engage with people. Uh, I think you can spot the difference a mile off. And I can always tell if, if I'm traveling around and I'm on, you know, if I'm top of the bill or if I've got to wait or if there's a comic on or if there's a singer on or, or a band on, uh, you can always tell the ones, you can tell them a mile off that they've had holiday park experience because they're just yeah, engaged. Absolutely. Better. absolutely can. <laughs> yeah, so we, obviously, I mean, we were just talk, talking about uh, sort of cabaret acting stuff before. Uh, I did yeah. want to ask if you had any sort of favourites that you've, that you've seen over the years, if any stood out for you, for good, bad or otherwise reasons. <laughs> right, okay. Well, 
putting aside the fact that we did have you after you'd finished uh, uh, as part of the entertainment team. Don't feel times, obligated, Phil. Don't feel with obligated. Your, <laughs> with your fans. With, well, that's why I said put it aside. Um, no, but, <laughs> but it was great. It was always great to have you back. But, but apart from yourself, Ross, of course, um, they used to be, you won't have seen these because they split up a good while before, but some people might remember a comedy app called Powis and Jones. Um, I, did, I did see Powis and, and Jones, yeah. Did you? They were, they were did Blackpool, you? actually, my first season, Dave Powis and Andy. Uh, they yeah, they were awesome. just the funniest guys, naturally funny. Um, they, th- to me, they were as good as Morecambe and Wise. And, uh, they, they were just meant to work together. They were really, really good. And it didn't matter how many times you saw them, you fell about laughing at them. Yeah. Um, and they used to do a thing... I've never forgotten it because they were so good, and and I also saw it a lot of times. Um, but they, they did they did a thing about the um, the football pools being announced, the scores of the football being announced. Yeah, and they did. Um, I, I can remember some of them was um, East five five four far so far four, <laughs> uh, and um, <laughs> Juventus nil Freventos two. <laughs> um, there were just so many of those just silly silly holiday park jokes really but but such good fun um and uh we also had a, a another lady who did i don't remember her name um she did a shirley bassey tribute right okay and she was on stars in their eyes and she mm. was really really good from that stars in their eyes and we used to have her often at the holiday parks because she was so good it could have been Shirley Bassey apart from Shirley Bassey would have cost you 100 grand and she, yeah. she was probably charging 200 quid um, but she was so good um, just sticks in your mind really that, that was a, a great act but there were so many so many over the years so many good comedians and um, was it Maxine and, and some of the best uh, that's it, Maxine Barry. That Maxine was Barry, yeah, she yeah, did start yeah. in her eyes. Um, um, and, the, and there was, uh, oh, well, I mean, all sorts of bigger stars as well. You know, Jimmy Cricket, the comedian. Um, uh, he he was just so funny. He acted really thick, didn't he? And he uh, had wellies on with L and R, so he put them on the right feet. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but um, I'm still friends with him now on Facebook, and and. I speak to him, uh, and he, he he's done a lot over uh, over this period of lockdown. He's done a similar thing. He's he, he's actually come on the screen every day on Facebook and done some amazing sort of little chats, motivational chats, really, not just funny stuff, but just not some really nice things. Yeah, just um, trying to keep the morale up. I think across the board because yeah. you, you could forget actually that sometimes some the people are on their own. And some of them don't have the kind of things that you have. Some people are living in a little flat in a one-bedroom scenario and they're on their own. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people's mental health, and it's, it's so important and something that we all talk about and should talk about more, actually, these days. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's been so nice to see because there's been so much negativity and so much drama and so much scandal that's took place over the last few months. It's been always a nice, refreshing thing to see when people... Um, sending out positive messages, positive vibes. You, you with your jokes, Phil. Like, and I've tried to do the same thing myself, doing silly parody songs and all that kind of thing, just to put a smile on people's faces. Because actually, I think we need a bit more of that and a bit less of the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I've actually watched all of your stuff that you've put out, your songs, and yeah, and the, I mean, some of it's just been really good songs, and they are, and some of it's been funny. Um, and it does, it just takes your mind off all the rest of it, doesn't it? And, oh, yeah. Uh, you Thanks. know, just kind of cheers people up a little bit. Thanks so much. I appreciate, I appreciate the views and the support. Now, we've, we've had this question. It's a core question. It's been on every single podcast and every conversation that we've had. We've had some good answers, some unexpected answers, and I've been dying to hear your answer. If there was a movie, Phil Martin, the movie, the biopic, all about your days from Bishop to general manager, who would get that role? Who would play you? Which actor would we see starring in the leading Hollywood production of the story of Phil Martin? Uh, 
it, it's it for me that would be a toss up between two people really and i and i couldn't quite decide which one of these two it would be um either arnold schwarzenegger or danny devito <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love I'm probably it. a mixture of the two of those. I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a one-off, so I can't think of anybody that would be close to who I am. But I think they're the closest. <laughs> I absolutely I love that answer. answer. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> That's answer. great. But I didn't expect anything less from <laughs> Phil. He's always got uh, something entertaining, something funny. To say. <clears throat> Honestly, Phil, I'm, I'm so pleased that you came on because... Um, I think for a lot of people, young people, when they first start on a holiday park, in, in, certainly in my experience in my first season, the general manager was somebody that was, uh, oh, you don't talk to him, you don't look him in the eye, don't even get around him. Yeah. He, he walks around in his own force field. That is just absolute My, my first park like, was. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, but it's, it's absolute nonsense, actually, because uh, I think you've completely dispelled that myth today, uh, having a chat with us. So thanks very much. Now, uh, my call my host... Pleasure. My co-host Lee has got a quick fire question round. Uh, we didn't put okay. this on the uh, on the email that was sent you with the intro because we want off the top of your head, quick fire, no thinking uh, answers. So I'm going to hand over to Lee the monk, and he's going to take it from here. So Lee, over to you. Okay. Wrap in, hold tight. Keeps arms and legs <laughs> in the building. So uh, I just want a quick answer. I'm going to ask you. There's about ten to twelve of them. I might throw a couple okay. of red errands in just to throw you off. So we're going to start right. off. Co Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Pepsi, diet. Oh, diet. Blur or Oasis? Uh, blur. Fingers for toes or toes for fingers? Oh, my God. Uh, fingers for toes. Celebrity crush? Uh, um, that was probably David Cassidy. Oh, okay. Cat or dog? Dog, definitely. Your favourite movie? Uh, Demolition Man. Oh, good choice. Favourite cartoon? Oh, dear me. It's not The Simpsons because I'm fed up with that. Um, I think probably uh, Tom and Jerry. I would have had you down as an Inspector Gadget type of guy. <laughs> favourite mine was, comedian? Mine was Tom and Jerry as well, Phil, so we're in good company. <laughs> ah, nice one. Favourite comedian? Favourite comedian? Oh, dear. You can see yourself. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, probably. It probably is me at the moment. Yeah, let's well, go for that. Well, that Can't leads think. me into the next question, which is your best joke. Oh, dear. The top of my head. Um <sighs> I can't think of one, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you something from last night that might be funny. Um, I, I had a dream, a long dream, it was very vivid about, um, I dreamt I was eating a giant marshmallow, and when I woke up, my pillow had gone. <laughs> <laughs> what colour of your toothbrush? <laughs> Blue. When was the last time you had a bath? Uh, yeah, this morning. When was the last time you told a lie? Uh, this morning. <laughs> what are you most proud of? <laughs> uh, most proud of? I think my relationship, probably. Been together mm -hmm. for 30 years now, and it's, it's, yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, my relationship. Most embarrassing moment? Oh, I can't tell you that, because that's too embarrassing. Um, <laughs> what's your worst <laughs> habit my worst habit um, uh, ooh, always being right and my he, other half my other half always said when they told me that I thought I'd met Mr Right I didn't know his first name was always <laughs> <laughs> best talent my best talent cooking I would have said morale boosting, but, you know, we'll, we'll mix the both <laughs> together. And yeah. your biggest secret? My biggest secret? I don't really have secrets. Um, Phil, yeah. you're not the first one to avoid this question, if I'm honest. Yeah, I can't <laughs> tell you. I've not caught anyone a, out yet. It's a secret, Lee. Yeah, I've not <laughs> caught anybody out yet. 
<laughs> well, you did good. Some interesting answers there, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I actually quite like uh, the, the pillow joke now. and I, I love how you sort of, that's a classic c comedian uh, technique. Like what you did, you, you just drew us in. You drew us <laughs> in. <laughs> and when we were ready, you just chopped us down with the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I really, really enjoyed chatting to you, Phil. I think it's an a, a, a absolute <clears throat> fantastic insight for, for anybody that's, that's considering a career in, in holiday parks. To live the holiday park life is a very unique um, experience, and it's reserved only for those brave and daring enough to uh, to go and apply, go and absolutely is. And I'm out to you guys and reminiscing. It's been fantastic. Yeah, talking of reminiscing though, over the years that I've worked on holiday parks, I've talked about you know a lot of people have had a positive influence on me, and, and you've obviously Phil, you've touched other people's lives in a positive way, like you're still doing it now on your Facebook. But did you have any positive influences during your time in the holiday parks, or people you looked up to that like, helped you get on the career path that you you ended up on? Oh, yeah, uh, a few, really. Um, I mean, there was a lady who was in charge of personnel uh, many years ago called Hilda, and she was a real shining light on my career. She she pushed me and, and uh, made me realise that this is what I, I had to do, I wanted to do, so her, definitely. Um, and a couple of, I mean, I've had some, some real... I've had good GMs. I've been very lucky. So when I was before I was a GM, I had some good GMs that I worked for that were a good a good motivational aspect of the job for me. And that that's the great thing about it. You know, I I, I don't have a bad word to say about my experience on the holiday parks. It it was just an amazing experience. I met some of the best yeah. people. You know, it's a breeding ground for hardworking people. I can tell a holiday park employee a mile off, even in my industry now of events. Um, but yeah, I, I want to kind of bring this to a close with all the positivity that you've brought. Um, during my time I spent with you, even though it was only short, during Ross's time and during everyone that you've, you've probably reported into you over the years and you're still sharing that positivity now, which I, I think is great, especially in the, the current pandemic and lockdown we've just gone through. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm, and I'm really pleased to do it because it's genuine. It's how I feel. Um, and I, I would really recommend that to a young person wanting to do something that was going to be uh, something that could give them a good future and a good standing in life, I don't think you could do anything better. I think that's I the totally perfect, uh, yeah, I think that's the perfect way to, uh, to wrap things up. Uh, Phil, you've been an absolute pleasure and a wonderful guest. I knew you would be. Uh, I don't mind telling you, Phil, live. I don't mind telling you. I, I think you've been my favourite guest so far. I'm mine. <laughs> yeah, and I bet you've not said that to all the others, have you? <laughs> No, <laughs> you'll have to have a listen back. <laughs> I will. Uh, it's right. been really lovely, guys. Really lovely. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Oh, thank you so much. And listen, the door is always open uh, if ever you want to come back again because we can't get the bloody thing shut. So thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much, uh, Phil, for your time. Um, you can go back to what you're doing now and spend the rest of this lovely day uh, enjoying yourself. And uh, I'm sure you'll be right, whatever you decide to do. Uh, enjoy your day. Uh, thank you so much for coming and taking part in this, our podcast, Holiday Park Life with myself, the Mackham, Ross and Lee, the Mank. Uh, thanks to Phil Martin. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, hopefully we'll have a chat again somewhere down the line. My pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much, Been Phil. great. Bye, guys. Well, that was Holiday Park Life with the Magam and the Monk. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took, took something from it. And uh, I hope it left you with a smile on your face, um, reminiscing about some old times, some good times, and maybe people that are looking to get into that kind of line of work in this industry in the future. Uh, maybe you guys learn something too before you go and put pen to paper and try and apply pen to paper. What? How old am I? Uh, get yourself on the internet, fill out an application form. I'm assuming that's how you do it nowadays. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us and we'll hope to see you again. For now, good night, children.